show for today. We're talking to Pastor Kay Walker, uh, Ms. Uh, Jackson, as well as uh, Mr. Summers, all dealing with services for ex-offenders. Now, uh, Ms. Jackson, before we had our first commercial break, we promised that we'd give you an opportunity when we came back to uh, talk about the establishment of a program that you call HUGS. Uh -huh. And I call it H-U-G-G-S <laughs> because I think that that is the, an, an, an acronym yes, uh, for is. that program. Why don't you talk about uh, how you became the founder of that program and, and some of the successes and some of the issues dealing with that. And then uh, Mr. Summers will give us some additional information in terms of his situation. He'll t sort of tie in with some of the things that she has to say. Um, I uh, was first, and I was incarcerated, and I uh, wrote the program while I was incarcerated. I really, really was tired of going back and forth into to the jail system. So I just, you know, pretty much surrendered my life over to God. And then these ideas start coming with, you know, me writing them down, writing them down. I didn't know exactly what I was writing, but I started writing those ideas down. Um, I was looking at a five-year day-for-day sentence. And uh, really, I really just started the sentence. And once I started doing what God told me to do, um, I did 10 and a half months. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been back since. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got out, uh, first I had to do community corrections, of course. And um, so I didn't start the program right away. I got a job and, uh, and it was pretty hard. I got a lot of doors slammed in my face. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of people that didn't care. I got a lot of, no, we can't help you. And, and it took me right back to what I was writing. And I was like, wow, I'm experiencing what I wrote. <laughs> so um, at that point in time, God made it a way for me to open up hugs. And a hug stands for humility, understanding God's grace, spiritual strength. And I started hugs in 2006, and we got a 501c3 later after that. Um, and I want to just say that HUGS is a program that will help ex-offenders uh, get back into society the right way. Mm -hmm. We need a lot of components when we come out. We need clothing, we need housing, we need health care. We need all these jobs, uh, education, and HUGS provides all of that for the ex-offender. And that's why I think, Mr. Summers, we call it, uh, we're calling this show Services for Ex-Offenders. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about that, uh, Mr. Summers? I think uh, that's a great idea. <coughs> I, I believe the problem is, is that we do not have a lot of help that people that's coming inside of the prison. Mm -hmm. Other people look at us as if uh, we need to be there, we need to stay there. Yeah. True enough, we made wrong decisions, mm -hmm. some made wrong mistakes. Uh, my problem was that I would come in and out, but I never had a father figure or mm -hmm. someone as a leader or a mentor to mm -hmm. guide me through. And because of that, it made it hard for me to be even stable with, as a husband or a father figure, as well as just a supportive person in society but the prop the pro the issue that I like is that that really matter is that there are people that is out there that really care mm -hmm. and to have the fact that Pastor Walker came in not only that he just you know prayed for me and kept on going like other people that does there they are come and they'll mm -hmm. volunteer just to put their name there to say that they've been there mm -hmm. but to just really reach out and go beyond as as, as well as she does in the hug and that, that's very appreciated mm -hmm. uh, most of us are very lost in the system because we don't know exactly where to go. Mm -hmm. You know, there are doors that are shut in our face, and I've been there almost six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, is that it's easy to get in, but it's very difficult mm -hmm. to get out. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much you do in the programs that you take, parole doesn't want to let you out, no matter how many uh, certificates that you have. Mm -hmm. and, 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 that's, and that also seemed to be an issue as well. But I'm very appreciative that Pastor Walker, as well as you, mm -hmm. Ms. Jackson, that helped us and reach out to people like us, mm -hmm. and, and especially in this state of emergency. I think, Pastor Walker, you talked about it on a number of occasions with us, uh, the uh, difficult problems that some individuals have with the whole process uh, of uh, incarceration and coming out with the parole system. Why don't you make some statements in reference to what Mr. Summers just said? Well, you know, that is definitely true. And then one thing he said, state of emergency, because really it is, this is a state of emergency because so many people in the system or outside of the system, I should say, don't understand the value of the people that have been incarcerated. You know, we incarcerate people for the purpose of punishment and rehabilitation, mm -hmm. but we but we lean so much toward punishment and don't and forget all about the rehabilitative mm -hmm. uh, aspect of incarceration, yeah. not realizing that these individuals, 90 some percent of them that are, are 
tried, convicted, sentenced to prison, mm -hmm. returned to society. Mm -hmm. The thing is, how do you want that individual to come back? Because for sure, he's going to be, he or she is going to be somebody's neighbor. Right. So how do you want that person to be? Uh, you want to view that person as somebody that's low down, no good, never make a change, or you, do you want to actively get involved in the process of making sure that you bring out the value that's inside of each human being? Mm -hmm. God made us alike. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some of us, you know, I, I, don't, I don't use the word mistake because when I, when I was a criminal, man, I was a criminal. I had a criminal thought process, man. I was a crook, man. I committed crimes. You know, I did it. That's what I wanted to do. I was strung out on dope. That was not the excuse. I still had the mindset. But the thing is, once that change takes place, Dr. Haney, within the individual, and that individual, like the prodigal son, come to themselves, then it's up to us, just like when, when Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb, when he, looked, when he called Lazarus forth, then when he came there, he called Lazarus, he told the, the people standing by to loose him and let, let him, him go. go. So, right. you know, the power of God will call us up out of our, mm -hmm. our, our mindset, but it's the people of God that has a responsibility to unwrap all those issues and negativity and mm -hmm. all those things in our life. And that's why programs like Hugs are is mm -hmm. in existence and stuff like that. And people that are like-minded got the heart to get out here and help people mm -hmm. that really need an opportunity, Dr. Haney, to make that decision, I mean, mm -hmm. to make that transition back into... Uh, Mm -hmm. so-called free world society. Well, Mr. Everett, over the last uh, minute and a half that we have here, what are some of the services that you offer to uh, okay. in, uh, former incarcerated persons? We, we offer counseling, we offer education, uh, helping them get their GED or getting them into a, a, a college of mm -hmm. their choice. Uh, we ha uh, offer them health care information, housing information, um, job search, job training skills. Uh, we offer computer classes, um, uh, and we do expunge. We help with the expungement if they can get mm -hmm. the expungement. Also, we help them with voting rights, re restoration of voting rights, because I have got mine back. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We just and offer. We also offer help with them if they want to uh, open their own business. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, the car, uh, person that's been incarcerated cannot get a job, but has a mind that they want to open their own business. Mm -hmm. So we help them with that process mm -hmm. also. Very good. And of course, uh, 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 Mr. Summers, we're getting ready for the uh, second uh, commercial break here. And after com we come back, we'll have about 10 minutes right. uh, for that. And when we come back, we'll start with you right. and we'll have you to give us some of your own experiences. And then we'll come back and sort of work back down the line again that's to Reverend right. Walker over the next uh, 10 minutes. But I think that. Uh, uh, the audience will agree with us that this is the kind of information that we've been given all along and I think only the two of you simply reinforce of what we've been saying all along and we're certainly glad to hear this information and let me encourage our audience to uh, uh, come back with us for this final segment uh, this morning. I'm Lamar Odom and I was raised in a single parent household. Sa to the final segment of the show for today.